Hello everyone, Mike the Penguin here with a special video for you. I recently upgraded my PC and decided I'd run some benchmarks to see what the actual differences would be between my old machine and my new machine. Uh, to start, I don't normally do these type of comparison videos, at least not for hardware, so don't take it at the same level as like Gamers Nexus, Jay-Z Two Cents, or Linus or the like. Uh, however, I did do my best to try and keep everything as straight as possible settings-wise and whatnot, and really, I just wanted to make a video that compared something older like the 3770K to the newer 3700X Ryzen chips uh, and help give kind of some data uh, in between there because I noticed a lot of stuff that's been coming out has mostly been uh, just like generation chips between AMD and Intel and such. With all the craziness of the AMD Ryzen launch, uh, I plan to put some answers to some specific questions people might have about my specific hardware and how I got things to run and whatnot and get the BIOS flashed and stuff and put some of that into the description so you can go ahead and check that out if you'd like uh, and now let's go ahead and get started. So my old system ran an i7-3770K overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz and a high positive airflow full size half 912 case. It used a Zotac GTX 1060 6 gig mini and 8 gigs of 1600 megahertz Corsair XMS RAM. I'd actually purchased 8 more gigs at one point, but found that two of my DIMM slots on my motherboard didn't work, uh, and that would be my ASRock Z77 Extreme 4 motherboard that I was using. My new system is an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X, tested at first with both stock and with Precision Boost Overdrive enabled, and I just switched to PBO for the rest of the video. It's in an NCXT H500 mid-size case. For this video, I tested it with the same GTX 1060 from my previous build, uh, but I also upgraded to a Vega 56, and I've got some benchmarks for that as well. I have 16 gigs of 3200 MHz G-Skill Flare X RAM, all of which is running on an MSI B450 Tomahawk. Uh, if anyone's wondering, I had very little trouble flashing to the version 18 BIOS for that motherboard, and it's all been running perfectly fine since I actually flashed it, so not too much trouble there. Starting off, keep in mind for all these slides, the 3770K is overclocked to 4.4 GHz, so if you've been running stock forever, your score's performance would likely be less. I just left it at this because that's what I'm used to running it at, and I'm really trying to compare what I had compared to what I'm using now, and other people, I'm sure there's plenty of people that have been doing the same thing, having it overclocked to 4.4, 4.5, and still been using it up until now as well. So it'll be applicable for some of those people more so. So comparing the CPUs on Cinebench R15 single thread, the 3770K has 159 points, whereas the 3700X hits 201 at stock and 202 with precision boost overdrive. Multi-threaded shows a giant difference, obviously, given the 3700X has twice the cores and threads as the 3770K. In R15, the 3770K hits 789 points, whereas the 3700X gets 2,081 points at stock and 2,149 with PBO enabled. That's over 2.6 to 2.7 times higher with two times the cores. In R20, you have a slightly higher gap, with the 3700X being 2.8 to 2.9 times higher than the 3770K. And this is, again, at 4.4 gigahertz overclock for a 3770K. For the rest of these tests, I ran them all with PBO for my 3700X. Moving on to more game-focused tests, I was certainly surprised, and you might be a little bit too. In 3D Mark's Fire Strike, you can see how the combined score is weighted more based on the graphics card. Even though the 3700X grabbed over two times the physics score, the score difference between the 1060 builds were only 753 combined points different, whereas the Vega 56 was much stronger, coming in with well over 6,500 points higher, and the combined score was over 5,000 points higher. Here's also a time spike comparison between the old and new build. I won't go into too much detail for this, but you can see how much of a boost you get upgrading both CPU and GPU compared to what the old build was. In a more real-world benchmark like GTA 5, there's something obvious here. Even though the 3700X is a big jump of an upgrade, the graphics card is still the bottleneck for these tests, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You could argue that if you're just playing games at 1080p, the 3770K is still a very capable CPU when overclocked. 
noting that these numbers are actually an average of the passes done in GTA 5's benchmark. The 3770K comes out with higher FPS using the same graphics card. That difference may come down to how each system ran the graphics card, allowing an older Intel system to have higher FPS. Uh, you can see similar results in the Fire Strike graph, where the Intel system actually got higher graphics score with the same card. The Vega 56 jumped 11 FPS higher with an average of 78, but you can also note that the minimum and maximum frame rates are higher for the new AMD system over the Intel one, regardless of the graphics card used. In a newer game like The Division 2, I was able to note some extra changes, but first off, again, the GPU is bottlenecked, so you have the same FPS between both 1060 builds. The Vega 56, however, ended up with 10 FPS higher on Ultra, and a whopping 23 FPS higher on high settings. If you notice, I added an extra stat to this graph, and it's the main reason why I upgraded my computer. When trying to record gameplay on high settings, the 3770K would drop from 63 FPS to 48 FPS whereas the 3700X on the same GTX 1060 only dropped from 64 to 58 FPS, and I'm sure I could tweak some settings to keep a solid FPS from there. And you see a similar dip with the Vega 56 going from 87 FPS to 83 FPS. I didn't run this test while streaming, so I don't know if the same dip directly compares statistically, but I know it definitely felt that way when streaming from the 3770K in the past. It really would dip hard. In the video comparison, you can notice a few extra things. First off, the CPU difference from in-game versus overall usage while recording. You can compare the numbers in the top left of the video from my Afterburner software with the in-game numbers that it has on the right side of the screen. As well from Afterburner, you can see some of the temperatures, specifically how the 3770K ran mid to upper 70s, which is kind of expected given the fact that it's been overclocked, and the 1060 ran at 82 degrees. When running the 3700X, I didn't actually see a temperature option in Afterburner, and so I used another software that I could actually see the temperature while running these tests, and it showed for that to be running between 65 and 70 degrees. As well, the Vega 56, which is actually the reference version, so it's a lower card, ran 73 to 75 degrees the whole time. The third thing I noticed was memory usage. The Division 2 is a memory hog, with the AMD build running around 10 gigs of memory, uh, and as you remember, the Intel system only had 8. Maybe getting more RAM could fix some of the frame drop issues from the Intel build that I've had, but as I said, two of my DIMM slots didn't work, so that wasn't really an option for me. So overall, would I say it was a good upgrade? If I just did gaming, I think I might have actually been a bit disappointed. But for recording and editing and streaming, I'm actually so stinking excited. So along with my M.2 NVMe drive, when I render videos, it is so much faster. For example, a 35-minute video would take about 32 minutes to render with the Intel build. Uh, and with the new system, a 35-minute video using the same settings it takes about 15 minutes, which is an insane difference. As well, I'll note that in other games, like Risk of Rain, so not even The Division 2, uh, I would notice that the longer I would be streaming, I would have more lag and hiccups on my old Intel machine, uh, causing CPU bottlenecking-like behavior. And while benchmarks are useful, they aren't perfect, and you can end up in some much harder to compute scenarios uh, than what shows in a benchmark. And so I believe that I definitely did have some CPU bottlenecking at one point, uh, trying to stream for long periods of time or record for long periods of time. So if you're thinking of upgrading from the same or similar type of system and are wondering if you should, I'll say this. What do the games feel like to you? Because most of the time, when gaming, you can feel if it's sluggish or not, or if there's lag or other things. So for older games, you might be able to just grab a better GPU and some more RAM and keep trekking along. But note that if you do decide that you're going to want to upgrade, it's not just going to be replacing the CPU, but you'll have to spend some extra money. You're going to have to get a new CPU, some new RAM, a new motherboard. So find out what you'd be comfortable spending and work from there. Do your research, figure out what you need, and then plan accordingly. I know next I probably want a better monitor, and then we'll eventually want a better GPU in the future, but I have all that planned and figured out for me, so you're going to have to figure out what you want to do for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and it helped by comparing something that was old with something new. 
Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. And again, I added some Q&A stuff in the description. You can check that out. If you liked the video, please give a like. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and thumbs down. And if you'd like to see some more of what I do, go ahead and press subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter, Twitch, and Discord. And I will see you all in another video. Bye.